I think they got to be very cautious. I would lean towards it. And there would be, have to be some very surprising kind of events that would take place for me to start Josh Allen. Number one, really your next three games, Molly, if you look at it, it's Minnesota, it's Cleveland, it's Detroit. The second yep. thing is this. Josh has got to be really honest about all of this right now. This is the second time this young man's had this injury in his NFL career in the first five years. So it's not only doing what's best for the team and Josh now, but it's also what's best for the rest of the season and the future. The reality is we are in week 10 we're in the middle of November. We all believe that this team is a Super Bowl or bust team. If they get to the Super Bowl, it's three months from now. The Super Bowl's three months from now. That if it, Quarterbacks throw on Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays. On average, quarterbacks throw about 100 passes a day. Let's, let's throw an average out there. If you do that over the next 10 to 12 weeks, that's another 4,000 throws on that injury. So you got to sit there and go, like, is it really the most important thing for Josh Allen to play this weekend at whatever percentage or functionality that he can play at when we think that we're going to be playing big-time games in January? And one of the strengths that Josh has is his ability to throw the ball as hard as he possibly can. So I sit there and I go, man, if, if, unless this guy is sitting there going, and, and I can watch it with my own eyes, and he could throw the absolute snot out of the ball and there's no type of impact on his elbow – if my team's not good enough to sustain Case Keenum, who's played in this league for a long time, not only this week, but for the next two or three weeks, then we don't have the roster that I thought we did, candidly. And so I sit there and I go, you better be darn cautious about the way you handle this situation moving forward. Oh, please. You know, I mean, you just took two minutes of my time that I can't even give back. What the hell was that? The fact of the matter is, Dan Olofsky, you know the answer to this question. You him and hard. You can't play this man. You can't play this man. Oh, okay. This UCL injury, I would remind you, um, from my understanding, you're going to need about four, three to four weeks to recover from that. You got to keep in mind what, I, what, 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 what brings to my mind, if I remember correctly, I'm trying to make sure I remember this, I believe Bryce Harper had a similar injury in baseball, and the Philadelphia Phillies sat him. Yeah. Why? Because – even though he's not a pitcher, particularly in the sport of baseball, when you've got those UCL injuries and you don't handle them correctly, it could ultimately lead to something like Tommy John surgery. Right. That's my understanding of it. If you know the specter of that exists and your aspirations are Super Bowl, okay? Totally. I understand the urgency because this ain't the beginning of the season. This is midway through the season. You got about eight games left, and the bottom line is Miami and the Jets are on your heels. I get all of that. But the flip side is you certainly can't put them out there this week. Now, what you could do, if you instead of four weeks, if you decide to go with three weeks, who do they have here coming up? They got Minnesota. Cleveland, Detroit. Cleveland, Detroit, and then road games at Detroit and New England. So my point to you is over the next three weeks, what do you do? Okay, you roll the dice. You go out against the Vikings. You go out against the Browns. You give him that time a week off, and then after that, you bring him back on the road against the Lions if you, if you fall apart and lose those two games. If you took a risk like that, that might be understandable and plausible. But there is absolutely right. positively no excuse whatsoever for the Buffalo Bills to put Josh Allen on the field this week. I you agree. want to take precautionary measures because this is it. I mean, this is your franchise. You simply can't take this chance. Yeah, and I think it's really important. I said this before, like, Josh has got to do a very good job. This is not – Josh is notorious for being one of the most competitive and tough guys in the, in the NFL. This is not a moment for that. He's got to do a really good job of being dead honest with their staff. And I think this is the perfect example of we often hear that saying, you got to protect the player from himself situation. The organization needs to do that. Um, there's, I've also heard this, Stephen A., like, well, you got to play him because you, the Bills need the number one seed. There's been three number one seeds in the last, last five years to make it to the Super Bowl. Okay, so the, 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 the reality, last year's number one seeds were the Green Bay Packers and the Tennessee Titans. They didn't, they weren't even sniff the Super Bowl. Okay, so I'm not in this camp where the Buffalo Bills have no chance of getting to the Super Bowl without the number one seed. Candidly, I think that they would be better suited offensively to play in better weather in the playoffs because it's easier to throw the ball. You know, that's a reality. So I, I don't think they need it. Okay. All right. I don't, I, they don't, they shouldn't play. 
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.